Hello there, very good evening and a warm welcome to the news live on Rupaini Channel I. I'm Sharam Maskrinias. And I am Tilina Uderapna. Coming up by our top stories for tonight. From tomorrow onwards, gas cylinders are to be inspected in ships prior to the issuance to the market. The country receives an income of 2,257 billion rupees from the export sector during the past 11 months. The Prime Minister requests continuous cooperation of Islamic countries for the development of Sri Lanka's economy. Sri Lanka and India commence bilateral economic cooperation discussions. On to the stories in detail now, starting off with local news. A special meeting of the Advisory Committee of the Ministry of Trade was conducted in Parliament today. The objective was to obtain the opinions of several parties on the incident of sudden explosions of gas tanks, which has been reported since the past few days. The meeting was presided by the Minister of Trade, Dr. Bandalungudu Vardhana. State Minister Vasanthala Gevanna also attended the meeting. The meeting has explored on the possibilities of further investigating on the issue pointed out by the opposition in Parliament yesterday. The other parties who have been called on to participate in the discussions were the Ministries of Cooperative Services, Marketing Development and Consumer Affairs Technology, Skills Development and Vocational Education, State Ministry of Research and Creativity, the Police, the Consumer Affairs Authority, the Department of Measurements and Standards, the Litro Gas Company, the Love Gas Company, the Sri Lanka Standards Institute, the Sri Lanka Accreditation Board for the Conformity Assessment and the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, the Ministry of Power and Energy and the Department of Government Analyst. Former Professor at the Sri Jayavardhanapura University, W.D.W. Jayatilaka, Professor Shanta Valpolage of the Moratua University and specialists on petroleum oil, Nimal De Silva, have also participated on this discussion. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has presented several questions to the Ministerial Advisory Committee requesting immediate written responses. Opinions have also been received from all parties present at the parliamentarians regarding the gas explosions. The meeting has also dealt on the issue pertaining to the altering of gas composition and on the usage of high-quality equipment as well as on the issuance of a report to the gas market upon inspection of the odours of gas. The need of expeditious implementation of the recommendations of the report of the committee appointed by the President in two weeks' time has also been highlighted. An agreement has also been reached on the inspection of the standards of gas within the ship itself prior to the delivery into the country. Chief Opposition Whip Lakshman Kiriyala and Ministers Vasudeva Nanakara, Udaya Gammanpila, Nimal Siripala de Silva, Maindana Dalut Gamage, State Ministers and Parliamentarians also attended the meeting. Chairman of the Litro Gas Company, Tesha Jaisinger, said that 27 ships have arrived in the past three months alone. He added that prior to the departure of the foreign vessels to Sri Lanka, the export process is being scrutinized. They also come under investigations on two occasions prior to discharge of the items. The chairman also said payments are being made according to reports obtained at two international laboratories. Minister Bandula Gunavardhana said that the news has been spread throughout the country regarding a death caused as a result of a gas tank explosion. He added that, however, this was a false news item. The minister further said that the police is also confronted with the big question of how to clear society of such misinformation. State Minister Lasantala Givana said that the decisions taken today will be evaluated upon receipt of the specialist committee appointed by the president in two weeks' time. He further said that from tomorrow onwards, all gas stocks will be subjected to checks in the vessels before unloading the quality of the items will have to be confirmed. He added that intellectuals have pointed out that gas cylinders will not be subjected to explosions, even the composition of gas ha was altered in any manner. The quality of the regulators and other appliances will have to be strengthened and altered according to the changes in the gas composition. Regulatory at the Upang, he Shaktimat Bavi when I see you to Baba. Evagema Samagam is in Nikutkam Labana gas, Sula, Gunat Makabavi, Vishation, May Gandasu and the Pilibanda Vatuna Rasayana Dravi, Pilibanda, a preparation at Lakkerla, Hetapatama, E Pilibanda Tahuruka Baganatama, where in the political Nikut Kirimata, Katu Karan. 
Minister of Power and Energy Uday Gammanpilla has also expressed the opinion regarding the explosion of gas cylinders. The minister said MPs have told in Parliament that a ratio of 30% propane and 70% of butane is necessary for the cylinders contain only 50-50% ratio of the two substances. They have suspected explosions due to this imbalance. The minister added that, however, this was a false assumption. He added that only decision has been taken regarding the pressure, creating unnecessary fears among consumers. The minister has expressed hope that the Public Utility Commission should shoulder the responsibility of regulating the energy sector with the expectation of alleviating the fears of the people. Deputy Director General of Health Services Specialist Physician Dr. Hemanta Herat says that the World Health Organization has pointed out that the imposition of travel restrictions alone would not be sufficient to control the spread of the new Omicron coronavirus strain. He further says that the people should adhere to proper health guidelines at all times have been raised about the possibility of detecting the Omicron variant in Sri Lanka and the likelihood of getting it detected through the current system. We know that we, like almost all other countries, we are also detecting or we are having our surveillance system to detect any new variants through a, a sample testing procedure where systematic samples are collected through these positive uh, PCR positive patients and they are screened for any type of genetic genetic aberrations or deviations and then out of them the suspicious ones are subjected to gene sequencing. Thereby we are trying to detect any variations. Since the procedure is based on the sample procedures or sample taking, the likelihood of detecting it will be increased if there are more and more cases in the country and that is why at the early stages we might not be able to detect it in early so therefore what we need to do is to take all precautionary action to prevent any type of covid infection rather than trying to aim it at the omicron variant for which we need to do only to adhere to the health guideline refrain from going into the crowded places do not organize such events of that nature and also all times when you are interacting with people try to adhere to the health guidelines thereby we will be able to stop the spread of this disease the administering of the booster dose on persons above the age of 20 years with low immunity and those above the age of 60 years has taken place in many districts under the COVID-19 inoculation program today as well. So far, under the COVID-19 inoculation program, people have been vaccinated with 30,339,027 vaccines. The first dose of the vaccine has been given to 15,932,194 persons. The number of persons who have received both doses is 30,749,891. The booster dose has been inoculated on 656,942. 559 COVID-19 infected persons have been detected in the island today. The total number of COVID-19 persons currently undergoing treatment is 9,393. 396 coronavirus patients were cured today. Total number of fully recovered COVID-19 patients is 540,783. The Director General of Health Services has confirmed 26 COVID-19 related deaths which occurred yesterday. 15 of the fatalities were of the age of 60 years and above. The remaining 11 victims were between the ages of 30 and 59 years. Chief incumbent of the Sri Pada Stane of Venerable Bengamue Dhammadin Nathera says that the Sri Pada pilgrim season of the years 2021 and 22 will commence on the Uduap full moon Poya day according to health guidelines. The Venerable Thera adds that pilgrims will be able to venerate the sacred Sri Pada site without any obstruction if they arrive with their COVID-19 vaccination cards. A new hospital with necessary indigenous medical treatment methods was declared open in the Etukala tourist zone in Nigambo recently. There is a special unit in the hospital for the treatment of COVID-19 patients. Chairman of the hospital A. Varnakumara and Director of Operations of the hospital K. R. Krishan said the clergy and low-income earners in addition to the coronavirus patients are being treated free of charge. 
And stories here at home. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says continuous support to the Islamic countries is being solicited to upgrade Sri Lanka's economy. And he made this observation during a discussion with the Sri Lankan ambassadors and high commissioners representing Islamic countries. The meeting took place at the Shangri-La Hotel Colombo last night. It was organized according to an invitation extended by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Professor Gio Pires. The Prime Minister was engaged in a cordial dialogue with the envoys. The Ambassador has appreciated the speedy measures taken by the Sri Lankan government to control the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. They have also expressed opinion relating to continuous maintenance of bilateral relations with Islamic nations as well as on contributing to the economic development of Sri Lanka through mutual action and project implementation. Foreign Minister Professor Gia Pires has made a clarification government's efforts to uplift the economy of the country. The ambassador and high commissioner who were present at the meeting represent Sri Lanka in the countries of Oman, the Palestine, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Qatar, Turkey, Iran, Libya, the United States, the United Arab Emirates, Indonesia and Egypt. Sri Lanka High Commissioner in the Maldives, Bangladesh and Pakistan have also attended the meeting. Vatu again Manjulalit Varnakumara, who was sworn in as the member of the Ninth Parliament of Sri Lanka representing the Sri Lanka Pudujana Perumana, has met Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa today. The new parliamentarian has called on the minister at his office in Parliament complex and received blessings and advice for his parliamentary life. He has been appointed to the post that fell vacant due to the resignation of Kalutura District Parliamentarian Mahindra Samarasinghe. Manju Varna Kumara took oaths before Deputy Speaker Ranjit Simala Pitya this morning. Also, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa declared open yesterday a new exhibition hall which displays sculptures including Buddha statues. The new showroom is located in Bellantara Road in Dehivala. Sculpture artist UL Vimal Premachandra, who has been felicitated with Presidential Award, has inaugurated the art gallery in the year 1993. The artifacts on display include the then Buddha statues, God statues and the Sandakata Pahanas. The Sri Lanka Export Development Board says Sri Lanka has earned a sum of 2,257 billion rupees through exports in the past 11 months. It further says that the country's export revenue last month alone amounted to 246.4 billion rupees. Sri Lanka has also earned an income of 10,077 million US dollars from garment exports last year. The SLEDB adds that the export income has gone up appreciably this year in comparison to the figure of last year. The board further points out that despite the lockdown of the country during certain months of this year due to the pandemic, the export procedure has been carried forward continuously. A special feature has been Sri Lanka exceeding the export revenue of 800 million US dollars in every month of the year. The highest monthly export revenue figure of the year of 1,232 million US dollars was recorded last month. The lowest income revenue of the year was reported in April of this year, which amounted to 818 million US dollars. The board predicts further increasing of export revenue by the end of this year. However, in the past 11 months, the country's import expenditure was at 18,262 million US dollars. Accordingly, the trade deficit was at 6,977 million US dollars. Economic analysts say that Sri Lanka's remarkable export revenue performance is a tremendous boost to the economy affected by the pandemic. Minister of Finance Basil Rajapaksa has commenced talks on Sri Lanka and India's economic cooperation today. The minister, who is on a two-day official visit to India, was engaged in discussions with the Indian Minister of Finance and Institutional Affairs, S. Nirmala Sita Raman. The meeting has taken place in the capital of New Delhi. Attention has been focused on many issues pertaining to bilateral economic cooperation. Minister Basil Rajapaksa has extended gratitude to India over the cooperation extended to Sri Lanka in many fields via its economic assistance program. An in-depth study has been made on ways of enhancing economic cooperation between the two countries. Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, S.R. Artigala, and Sri Lanka's High Commissioner in India, Milinda Morogoda, have also taken part. 
Minister Basil Rajapaksa also visited the Sulab International Social Service Organization today. This institution is popular in India as one engaged in the propagation of non-traditional sources of energy, which includes the management of refuse as well as an agency of social reconstruction. The minister also met the founder of the organization, Dr. Vindeshwar Patak. Around 5,000 voluntary workers are working for the institute. Votes of the Ministry of Education and the affiliated state ministries on women's and child development skills, development Dhamma school and Pirivena education were taken up a debate in parliament today. Parliamentarian Rauf Hakim said that one half of the foreign funds have been allocated on primary and secondary education. He also said that foreign aid is being provided to 80% of higher education. Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana said that he does not rule out of a financial crisis. He added that, however, that does not mean that everything has to be closed down. All services, including health and education, are being maintained. In the meantime, an additional 32,000 million rupees have been allocated to resolve the teacher principal salary problem, according to the recommendations. The minister has pointed out that this was a historic measure taken by the government. Never before such a large amount has been allocated for payment of salaries in the education sector. The iconic Colombo Municipal Council building was illuminated in orange with messaging on the National Women's Helpline and the Mitru PSA hotline recently to place a spotlight on intimate partner violence and encourage more women to seek help. The illumination organized by the UNFPA in collaboration with the Colombo Municipal Council and the High Commission of Canada launched the 16 Days of Global Activism Against Gender-Based Violence in Sri Lanka on the 23rd of November with a focus on intimate partner violence. The intervention is the culmination of a trilingual national media campaign on intimate partner violence, highlighting evidence from the Women's Wellbeing Survey, Sri Lanka's first national survey on women and girls. The survey found that one in five women in Sri Lanka have experienced physical and or sexual violence by an intimate partner. Yet, close to half of the women who experienced sexual violence by a partner have not sought formal help anywhere. The survey also found that one, of, one third of women who experienced physical and or sexual violence by an intimate partner had contemplated suicide, highlighting the serious repercussions violence has on the lives of women and girls. Encouraging more victims to seek help and ensuring support systems are available and accessible is essential for the recovery and prevention of violence against women and girls in Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, the State Children's Paint Festival and Art Exhibition was held in Nelumpokula Performing Arts uh, Theatre today. Awards, medals and cash gifts were presented to 100 students who have achieved merit certificates on the national level at the Children's Paint Festival held this year. 15 students who have secured prim preliminary standings in the competition were given special awards, medals and cash prizes. The skills, certificates and awards have been presented under five categories. A children's art exhibition was also conducted at the Nilum Pokuna Theatre premises. A group including State Minister Vitra Vikramanaika was also present on the occasion. Now in other news, direct air flights between Kazakhstan and Sri Lanka commenced today. Accordingly, aircraft KC-167 carrying 162 passengers from the Air Astan Airport in Kazakhstan touched down at the Bandarnaika International Airport this afternoon. State Minister D.V. Chanaka and officials were, pre were present at the airport to welcome the staff of the Kazakhstan aircraft. The National Council on Road Safety has taken measures to increase the compensation pr being provided on unidentified motor accidents to 250,000 from 200,000 rupees. It has also decided to increase the compensation on seriously injured victims to 150,000 from 100,000 rupees. The revised measures are scheduled to be implemented with effect from next year on the instructions of Minister of Transport Pavitra Vanyarachi. This was disclosed at a ceremony organized by the National Council on Road Safety today. 
A declaration on consumer rights and responsibility re relating to the manufacturing, supply of services and usage of petroleum products was unveiled today. The event was preceded over by Minister of Power and Energy Uday Gamman Pillar. The inaugural session of the Joint Operational Committee on the Development of Industries in Sri Lanka for the five years from 2021 to 2025 was, was conducted yesterday. The event was jointly organized by the Ministry of Industries and the United Nations Industrial Organization. On this occasion, an agreement has been signed relating to the National Program on Industrial Development in the presence of Minister Vimal Veeravansha. Secretary to the Ministry of Industries General Daya Ratnayaka and the Sri Lankan representative of the United Nations Industries Organization R.V. Bakal have signed the agreement. Well, that wraps up tonight's edition of the Rupavaini English News. Join us once again tomorrow. Until then, thanks for watching. Have a great night.